Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Time for our monthly Q&A. Before I begin, let me apologize to all those whose names I will butcher throughout the video. Also, if you can help me pronounce your names correctly, I would really appreciate it. Please let me know in the comment section. So, let's take a quick look at the questions for today. First, um, Masiak, Xing Yi Animals and uh, Elements. Second, from uh, It's Really Zhong, Five Elements and in Xing Yi Animals. Three, from uh, Ballistics, Poems in Martial Art Manuals. Fourth, from uh, Thomas Hudachesk, Conversionism and uh, Authenticity. Five, from uh, Frederick Gaudin, First, Chen style, small versus big frame. Six, Frederick Gaudin, English translation of Chen Xin's book. Seventh, from Frederick Gaudin, Pi Quan, chopping versus pressing. Eighth, Bruno Nuance, Xing Yi branches and forms. Ninth, Bruno Nuance, Hu Xing and the spinal structure. Question number 10 from Robin Andrews, Yin Yang in Humans. 11. From Alfred uh, Jill Cohen, Silk Reeling Illustrations in Chen Xin's book. 12. From uh, um, Pepper Dan, uh, Qing Gong. 13. From uh, Eric Potter, Sha Guo Zheng's Elbow Position. So, Without any further ado, let's get started. Um, Masek asks some Xing related questions. I quote, What is the differences in martial arts between animals and uh, Wu Xing forms? Do animals have a Wu Xing side to them? For example, wood monkey or fire monkey. Will there be an episode and about Liu He Ba Fa? End code. Uh, hello, Masiak. Thank you for these interesting questions, and I'd like to answer them one by one. First question What is the difference in martial arts between animals and uh, Wu Xing forms? Five elements is the fundamental and the most uh, con important content in Xing Yi practice. The objective of a five element practice is to Develop internal power at the Xing Yi is a Fa Jin oriented style, and the internal power is the foundation of any Fa Jin. So, five element practice is the spirit of Xing Yi. The twelve animals are twelve sets of skills and techniques used for self defense. Five elements are a prerequisite for any further practice. Including the twelve animals, without the proper five elements practice, any animal form practice will be empty and pointless. In other words, animal practice should be based on the five element, not the other way around. Second question: Do animals have a Wu Xing size and to them, for example, wood monkey or Fire monkey. Well, it depends. By the way, Wu Xing is the Chinese term for five elements. Since five elements represents five types of uh, four power by nature, sometimes people use an approach that integrates the elements with animal movements when there are many movements in an animal form. For example, in Li Sunyi's monkey form, there is a hung fist movement in one of the monkey movements, hence called Earth Monkey. But usually, we name an animal movement with a specific name instead of the element animal format. By the way, in Chinese astrology, people use element animal format to describe one's astrological character, which has nothing to do with uh, martial arts. Third question, will there be an episode about Liu He Ba Fa? I think I have mentioned it in 
prior videos, but I will mention it here again. It is my principle to not comment on any style I do not practice myself. Regarding Liu He Ba Fa, I know a few people who practice that style and based on my observations so far, I think it is an interesting style in terms of history and uh, story. That's all I can say about that style. Mersek, hope that answers your questions. Let's look at the next one. It really Zhong asked a Xingyi question, I quote, Does each of the 12 animals contain all aspects of the 5 elements? If not, which animals represents which elements and which animal is the most complete? End quote. Thank you, it really John, for another good Xingyi question. It is not necessary for each of the 12 animals contain all aspects of the 5 elements. Of course, some animal forms are longer than the others, as a result of which there are more movements in those types of animal forms. At the same time, multiple elemental aspects can be found in those forms. For example, rooster, swallow, and the monkey forms are a lot longer than forms such as dragon, tiger, and so on. Again, five elements are five types of power, and if you can find these power manifestations in an animal movement, then that movement will represent the elements character. So, to answer your second question, any longer animal form will contain multiple elements. While well, many other martial arts may be inspired by the movements of uh, certain animals, Xing Yi does not perceive animals in the same manner. So, even if a Xing Yi animal movement contains all five elements, it doesn't imply you should only focus on that particular movement and ignore the other animal movements and the five elements. A Xing Yi practitioner should love all animals equally. Also, bear in mind that even when you practice 12 animal forms, Xing Yi power should be the core practice. Any animal movements no matter how flexible and relaxed, should have Xing Yi power, or else it will not be considered Xing Yi. Also, it is worth noting that you have to practice five elements at a good level, or at least develop some Xing Yi Fa Jin, and only then should you move on to 12 animal form practice. Otherwise, it will just be a form without any Xing Yi animal spirit. Each Xing Yi animal spirit is a specific technique meant to be used in combat situations, and not supposed to be a fancy movement. Actually, Xing Yi animal forms are not fancy at all. Anyone who tries to make it look fancy will be violating the Xing Yi principle. It's really John. Hope that answers your questions. Let's move on to the next one. Blitzix asks a question about those poems, songs recorded in some traditional martial art training manual. He wants to know if those contents were created aiming to work as the reminders of the way the form should be or a guideline to the form's characteristics and uh, aspects. Thank you, Ballistics. Interesting question indeed. In Chinese martial art community, we call those poems, songs, kou jue. Kou means verbal, jue means key information. Put together, it means mnemonic Rim, a PC formula often in rims. Originally, Kou Jue was used by religious doubts 
for teaching and performing religious rituals in the old days for many specific purposes, including dispelling evil energy from someone or some place. Later on, other practices borrowed this method in order to make it easier for people to memorize texts. In modern times, Kou Jue is usually translated as a proverb. There are many martial art proverbs in the community. All those martial proverbs are very important, but often also very confusing. Practitioners have often compromised clarity in favor of linguistic appeal during the formulation of proverbs, thus making them sound pleasant but really hard to understand. Furthermore, many Kou Jue or proverbs were contextual at the time of creation, and the context is often not reflected in the words. Naturally, this leads to a majority of practitioners in later generations taking the proverb at face value. Even worse, each Kou Jue often has its own culture, linguistic, and technical background, which cannot be applied to other Kou Jue even though they may sound similar. The lack of understanding of the context of each Kou Jue easily makes the unqualified practitioners misrepresent and misinterpret them. Think about this example. I study English and I can speak English in a professional capacity and I can correctly understand most modern usage of the English language. But that is not the case when I read classical English literature such as the works of Shakespeare. I have a really hard time understanding and processing classical English language. If Shakespeare's work are difficult for me on the basis of linguistic complexity alone. Try to gauge how difficult it is for a person who is neither an expert in the traditional Chinese language nor an expert in Chinese martial arts to interpret traditional Chinese martial art proverbs. Very often, they will use some prior Chinese to English translation as a reference to interpret it. Unfortunately, those translations are often wrong to begin with. I have already talked about such an example in the Q&A section of my 100th lecture video. Link is in the description. By the way, I recommend you check out my playlist on decoding martial proverbs. Link is in the description. I hope to resume that sex series in the near future. Ballistic, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Mr. Thomas Hodachesk asked a question about Confucianism and authenticity. It is a great question, so please allow me to read it for you first. I quote, Thank you for the very clear and helpful lecture about the nature and the application of the inner mind. I have an unusual question and I'm not sure if it is appropriate to ask this. My Chinese Tai Chi master once talked about Confucius teachers that it's important to be authentic. My question is, what does that mean? I thought that in Chinese culture, it's important not to show your true inner feelings or is this Eastern authenticity something different than the Western? Understanding. Like your inner feelings and thought match your outward behavior. End quote. Thank you, Mr. Hudachesk for this question and I really appreciate your support over the last two years and apologies for the delay in answering this question. Yes, Confucianism does emphasize Zhen O authenticity. It is one of the key concepts in Confucianism. In order to introduce authenticity, I'd first like to make a simple comparison between 
Confucianism and Taoism in terms of the understanding and interpretation of Zhen or authenticity. Then I will focus on explaining authenticity based on Confucianism since many of you already have a good understanding of Taoism. So, what is authenticity or truth? Both Confucianism and Taoism say truth is truth or authenticity is truth. Now, let's look at the differences. Confucianism pays attention to humanism, truth leads to sincerity, and advocates a promising attitude towards life. Taoism pays attention to the way of nature and promotes non-action as an attitude to life. Seeking truth is a value orientation jointly advocated by Confucianism and Taoism, and it is also the most basic value concept of Chinese people. Taoism emphasizes non-action, while Confucianism advocates action. Non-action and action are both opposite and complementary. Confucianism and Taoism complement each other and are both conducive to the perfection of personality. Authenticity or truth is the core concept in Confucianism and we can find it everywhere in Confucian documents. Also, bear in mind another important value of Confucianism is Ren, usually translated as benevolence, goodness, or humanity. Confucianism believes that benevolence starts from sincerity. Without hypocrisy or concealment, just like the heart of a child. The constant of a mean, a Confucian classic, which I have introduced in a prior video titled Tai Chi Stepping Like a Cat, says, Cheng zhi zhe ren zhi dao. Translation, sincerity is the way of man. End translation. The interpretation is that sincerity is the right way of life. Sincerity involves two issues, speaking with respect to myself. Firstly, I want to be sincere to everyone in general. Secondly, my sincerity also depends on the other person or the recipient. So, Confucianism emphasizes sincerity of speech over eloquence of speech. Eloquence alone without sincerity is criticized in Confucianism. Before we talk about expression of true feelings in Chinese culture, I should point out the differences between expressions and feelings. According to Confucianism, even if you feel something, it is not always necessary to always express it. But when you express something, it should be sincere. As a Chinese person, I have to say that it depends. In Confucianism, the concept is that one should be able to handle their emotions or maintain a constant mean or zhong yong. Another explanation of a zhong yong concept. So, the ability to handle one's emotions is believed to be a sign of maturity. According to Confucianism, I am still immature, since I all very often show my emotion in front of others instead of holding it within. It's my personality. So, expressing or withholding one's emotions has nothing to do with authenticity or truth. Authenticity is the way of life, while expressing or withholding one's emotion is a personal choice in social interaction. Ms. Huda checks, I hope my answer helps. Let's move on to the next question. Frederick Gaudin asked a few good questions and I'd like to answer them one by one. His first question is about small versus big frames of Chen style Tai Chi. He asks, I quote, 
is a short frame Chen Tai Chi, mainly different from the long frame in the amplitude and expression of movements. Or are different more fundamental such as different movements and routines? End quote. Both small and big frame Tai Chi follow the same Tai Chi principle and aim at the same objective but practice in different ways. Small frame contains big movements, while big frame contains small movements. Movements are different from the term frame. Here's the second question. Are you aware if there exists a quality English translation of the Chen Xin book? Well, there exists at least one English translation of Chen Xin's book, but I cannot fully attest to the quality of translation since I only quickly glanced at a couple of pages. Sorry, I cannot help any further in this matter. Here's the third question. In Xingyi, it seems some people sometimes refer to Pi Quan as a splitting, chopping force, a bit like an axe. When I think about it, for instance, in applications, I am under the impression it seems a bit more like a pressing force. Would it be possible to explain on this? Well, it is a common misunderstanding of this expression of Pi Quan. In China, some beginners always criticize other people's pi quan or metal fist liking axe-like motion. Actually, a movement made by axe is not necessarily vertical, but instead it should be forward and downward. As for pressing, it is following the pi quan principle as well, since our hand is not an axe and there is no way to convert our hand into an axe. So, when the hand reaches the opponent's body, you can press your force into the object. And nowhere in the Xingyi classics is it said that you are not allowed to use pressing force in Pi Quan. Pressing is the nature of Pi Quan or axe-like movement. Fred, I hope that answers your question. By the way, the following words are not meant for Fred, and I'm just using this opportunity to share my observations with you all. Very often, not only in martial art practice but also in many other things, a beginner only sees the differences between different practices. They cannot see the commonalities between two different physical differentiated movements. But in reality, different approaches often end up in the same result. That is how you differentiate a beginner from an expert. In other words, when you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Of course, some people have other personal agenda, which is beyond the discussion of this topic. Bruno Nuance asked two questions. Let me answer them one by one. His first question I quote, Which Xingyi branch has less forms in his training program? End quote. Any well-developed branch of Xingyi contains many single movement practice, routines, weapons, and so on. If there are only a few routines of a branch, then very often it indicates a lack of a development in that branch. It was true in all the days, but many not be a valid criteria in the modern time because of the lowering of standards as a result of incorporation of a wushu practice by many other practitioners. More importantly, it is not about which style has more forms but it is about our own choice to practice. If someone wants to become a Chuan Ren, then comprehensive mastery of a practice is a must. In the second question, I quote, About the action of the spine when you send the power out in Tiger Hu Xing, 
you bow the spine when you store power and unfold when you send power out or you do the opposite end quote my quick quiet answer for is is that i slightly curve the spine when storing power and then unfold during release not the opposite however when you pay close attention to my movements then you will notice that the curving movement is not very obvious. The great power is from the releasing of tension, not the bending motion. This is the very important aspect and I recommend you try it by yourself. A lot of the so-called traditional Xing Yi, which is in fact heavily influenced by modern Wushu, is severely lacking in these details. You will notice those practitioners move their arms like a robot. You can surely find many such examples on the internet. Bottom line, if your objective is to practice traditional Xing Yi, it's worthwhile for you to also be able to identify modern Wushu influenced Xing Yi and actively avoid it. Bruno, I hope that answers your questions. Let's look at the next one. Ruben Andrews asked an interesting question. I quote, I have often heard that men's minds are young and their body is yin. Women's mind is yin and their body is young. Is it true that internal martial arts transform a man's body to be more young and what will this effect be to have a young body as well as a young mind? End quote. Thank you for the question, Robin. Before I answer the question, allow me to correct you first. There's no such concept of the young mind and the yin body or vice versa, since body and the mind should unify as one. This is an old concept that describes the energetic nature of men and women. However, it is rooted in TCM, not martial art or Xiu Dao. In TCM, the theory is that qi or yang energy is the dominant factor of man's health, while xue or blood or yin energy is the more dominant factor for women. It's not that a man has to convert their energy to yin or that a woman has to convert her energy to yang. It is also wrong to say that men have to transform their yang energy to even more yang. In the end, we need to reach a neutral or balanced state of energy between yin and yang, not transform ourselves in the opposite direction. Again, in martial arts, we need to strengthen our energy, which is the balanced yin and yang energy, not just the isolated and individual yin or yang energy alone. Robin, I hope that answers your question. Let's move on to the next one. Mr. Alfred Jill Cohen asked some follow-up questions after I answered his uh, original question in last week's video on silk reeling energy. Link is in the description. Here, he refers to the silk reeling illustration in Chen Qin's book. He asks, I quote, are the lines in the illustration representing external spiral movement of the arms, legs, and the torso, or are they representing internal movement within those body parts? And are those these lines denoting for specific positions of the movements, or they are mere general illustration of the spiral movement without denoting on specific acupuncture points um, or specific body parts in the body." End quote. Well, any energy orig originated inside the body and the limbs must get applied outside the body and the limbs. In other words, internal energy should be generated internally but applied externally. I have a video on the subject Nei Gong Wai Yong 
talking about the internal energy and uh, emphasize that it should be applied externally, or else it will be useless in combat situations. So, in Chen Xin's book, those lines are used to express the external expression or application, not the internal movement at all. Also, they are just general illustrations which do not specify any areas of the body. Silk reeling energy should be everywhere but applied in only one stream of energy, which I talked about in last week's silk reeling energy video. Ms. Cohen, I hope I have answered your question. Let's move on to the next one. Pepperdan asks about Qinggong. Thank you, Pepperdan. I do plan to make a dedicated video for Qinggong, but let me talk about it briefly here. Qinggong, a very popular term, is used to describe the practice of jumping very high after practicing certain Latinist techniques. To my knowledge, no prior definition of Qinggong exists. So, we first need to define what Qinggong is. Of course, there are some practices can help can help someone jump higher or faster, but I do not think any Qinggong practitioners can jump higher than the Olympic level high jumpers. So, if someone claims they can jump very high because of Qinggong practice, please take this with a grain of salt. Pepperdan, I hope that answers the question. Let's move on to the final question for today. Eric Porter asked about Sha Guo Zheng's elbow position seen in the thumbnail of a prior video, which you can also see here. Well, um, Eric Porter, as I have mentioned in the past, I do not want to get involved in any issues you may have with others in the community. But since you also asked me a technical question, I think the technical part is worth answering. Sha Guo Zheng is regarded as one of the best martial artists by many in the community, including myself. He left behind a lot of great materials in the form of written works, photos, and videos, all of which reflects his highly advanced practice. Sha Guo Zheng's photo that I used in the video clearly indicates his elbow position, and I was impressed by your sharp observation. I have to tell you that Sha Guo Zheng's practice is totally right and should be taken as the reference in Xing Yi training. I hope that answers the question, Eric Potter. Also, I do appreciate your support very much. I would still ask you to tone your language down. In fact, it is not at all necessary to argue with others who may have different ways of practice compared to Sha Guo Zheng and myself. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, right or wrong, regardless. Also, like I have mentioned in my 99th lecture, I have been slandered by malicious people in the past. To tell you the truth, I do not care and it makes no difference to me whatsoever. Their misunderstood claims actually help me clarify important misconceptions rampant within the community. So, I will keep going. I will just ignore them and keep working on what I think is right. It is a balanced world because of the coexistence of yin and yang. I'm yang. With that, we conclude this month's Q&A. Thank you all for the questions, and I hope you all found my answers informative. Thank you for watching. See you next time, and enjoy your practice.